Hello everyone, Simon3D here and welcome to another tutorial. In today's video, we will create this sort of energy security gate in Blender. The whole effect is just a procedural shader applied on flat geometry that reacts on objects passing through. So I imagine it can have a lot of different creative applications, not necessarily as a security gate, but this is the case that I created for this video. And as always, the project file that you see right now is gonna be available on my Gumroad link in the description, and if you feel like this sort of content is attractive to you, then consider subscribing. Let's just jump into new Blender scene, and first let's create a plane. This is gonna be the base for our shader. Now let's drag in another viewport, and change it to shader editor. You can also click N to close this panel, and click new to create new material. Now we can delete the principled BSDF as we will use only the emission and transparency and we can create those right away. So simply search for emission shader, transparent BSDF and also a mix shader and we can connect those together. The factor is gonna be the mask that will drive our effect. Now to begin let's start with the lines pattern, the horizontal lines that are going through the gate and for that we will use a noise texture. Now if you have a node wrangler enabled, simply select the node and click Ctrl T. If you don't, then make sure that you enable it because we will use it throughout the whole tutorial. It's under Edit, Preferences, Add-ons and simply search for node wrangler and make sure that it's enabled. Now we can preview this noise texture simply by holding down Ctrl Shift and left mouse button and clicking on the node. But to see it in our viewport, we have to switch to rendered view. Now with our noise texture, we have to transform it into this horizontal line and we will do that through the scale. You can see that as we change the Y value, then the pattern gets stretched horizontally, just like we need it. And then to control the overall scale of the pattern, we can do it through the noise texture node. So let's set it to something like 10 maybe. And now we could manipulate this Y value, but there is a better way to do it and let's do it right now. So first of all, we will need a value node, then a math node and a combined XYZ. Now, because we know that we want the Y value to be smaller than X and Z, we can connect this value to X and Z and then the Y will have to go through this math, so connect it like so and change the math node from add to divide. And now we can connect combine XYZ into the scale. So now, as you can see, we can control the overall scale of the pattern with this value node and then control the stretching by increasing the divide value node. The more you increase it, the more stretched the pattern will be. So maybe something like 20 and in the value one sounds, sounds about right. And with that, we have the base for our gate. Now, the next thing that we will do is we will make sure that the effect is brighter on the sides where the gate is supposedly being projected from and it fades in the middle. And we can achieve that simply by using a gradient texture node. And again, with the node selected, click Ctrl T to get the mapping and texture coordinates. And while we are at it, let's make sure that the texture coordinate is connected to the mapping node from object, both in the noise texture and also the gradient texture. Now let's add another value node that will let us easily control the scale with just the one value because we want that scale to be applied to all the X, Y, and Z uniformly. Now let's preview the gradient texture and we can see that the gradient is now from the bottom up, but we want it to be from side to side. So for that, we need to change the Z rotation and rotate it by 90 degrees. And now in order to get the other side as well, we will need another gradient texture and connect it to mapping as well. But in between, we will need a math vector sorry, vector math node, and set it to multiply, and in all those three values, set to minus one. This will simply invert the mask so that we have the white values on each side, and then it gets darker as it comes to the middle. Now all we have to do is add another math node and just connect both of those gradient textures with add, and if we preview that one, you can see that we have sort of the effect we're going for, but we also have to run it through additional math nodes to get more control over the gradient falloff and the strength of the brightest value on the edges. So let's just copy this math node and change it to multiply and then copy again right after it 
and change it to power. Right now the power node controls the fall off of our effect, of our mass, and the multiply node controls the strength on the edges. So let's make it quite subtle, maybe something like this, 4.5 maybe, and then multiply 1.2, we can change it always later, and then even more so, we can, have, we can fine tune the whole effect by manipulating this value that's connected to the scale. The bigger it is, the harder the mask, the, the more contrasty the mask becomes. So if you go to something extreme, you can see that we have almost sharp edges. But let's keep it at something low, maybe like 0.6, and that seems alright for now. Now since we have the mask and our pattern, we have to combine those two, and then we can start previewing how the whole effect looks like. So let's just tidy up the graph a little bit, move it to the side, move this one a little bit closer, those three nodes can go here. And here let's add a mix RGB node and connect our pattern and the mask and make sure that the mix RGB is set to multiply. Now if you preview that one and we bump in the factor to 1, you can see that the mask is affecting our pattern but not in the way that we intended, so let's just exchange the pattern and the mask and now lower the factor just a little bit so that we have those lines in the middle as well but much darker than the one on the side. Now let's connect the result of our multiply into the mix shader factor, plug the mix shader shader into the material output surface and we can delete the viewer for now. And now in the material properties make sure that the blend mode is set from opaque to alpha blend and as you can see the effect is sort of already visible. One thing to improve how it looks like would be to go into the scene settings and then enable bloom as well as in the emission shader node bump in the strength to something like 10 so we can see now that the sides are much brighter than the middle now as you can see this whole effect is kind of blending in together so we can add one more node to get even better control over how it looks like and that would be a color ramp and we have to connect it between the mix shader node and the noise texture. Then change the interpolation from linear to B-spline and exchange the colors so that the black is on the right side and the white is on the left. And now as you pull in the black side to the left, you can see that the effect is getting more contrasty and more sharp looking. You can put this black value fairly close to the left because as you can see, the gradient is still fine thanks to the B-spline interpolation. And there comes our two previous nodes that I mentioned the multiply and power that control the fall off of the effect as well as the, as the strength on the sides. So now is the time for you to adjust it to however you want it to look like. And then if you want to see more of the pattern in the middle, simply bring down the factor in the mix RGB node. So as you go down, the whole gate looks more even. And then if you bump it up to one, then the middle is fully transparent. But I like to keep it as something like 97 so I still see a little bit of that pattern in the middle anyway. Now to give it some color you can either change the color in the emission node if you want it to be just one color maybe something green or if you prefer this to have a gradient of different colors you can add another color ramp before the emission. Let's move all of those a little bit to the right and then connect the mix RGB shader node to the color ramp change the interpolation to linear and again change the order so that the white is on the right, black is on the left and you can connect it to the emission shader and here in this color ramp you can set the colors that you want to be on the side so let's say I want it to go from green to red and now with just dragging those values in a little bit closer you can see we can get this sort of abstract results now this is the base for our whole effect, but as you can see it's very stationary and it doesn't look appealing and it would look so much better if it was, if it was animated. So let's do that now. In this noise texture, let's change the type from 3D to 4D, which will give us this W value, which is basically the seed of our noise. And let's make it a little bit more space here. Let's create a value node connected to the seed value. And then in this value node, let's create a driver which will change the value based on the animation frame that is currently on. So simply type in hashtag frame divided by something like 50 and then as you click play you can see that the effect is getting animated along the way as the animation progresses. Now you could type in this driver directly in the seed value but later when we will make the objects outlines that will pass through the gate it would be nice if it was animating in the same way that the side noise texture is. That's why we took it out into this value node so that we can reuse it later. 
So now comes the part where we make it react to objects passing through. So let's make the viewport much bigger because we don't need the shader editor for now. And here let's select our plane. Let's also pause the animation and then go into edit mode. And as you can see, we have only four vertices, which is way too low for what we want to do because we want the objects passing through give us the vertex color mask. So for that, we just need way more vertices. So simply with all the vertices selected, hit a right mouse button and click subdivide. And as you can see, we added four more. So now let's just hold down shift and click R to repeat the action. And let's repeat it a couple of times until we have this nice, quite dense, but not too dense to not kill your performance, grid of points that will tell us where the object is passing through. Okay, so with all these vertices selected, let's go into object data properties, this green triangle, and then open vertex colors. Click this little plus button to create a vertex color group. As you can see, we created it. It's called call, but we can change the name of it. Simply double click on it and name it something that you will remember later. And now go into this physics properties and click dynamic paint. We can also exit the edit mode. So simply click on tab. And with the plane still selected, we can click add canvas so that the plane will act as a canvas and the objects passing is gonna be our brushes that will create the mask. Now all we have to do here is check dissolve and uncheck dry, open the dissolve tab and change the time to something smaller like five. And also we can uncheck the slow. This basically will tell us how long will the vertex affected by our object keep the information that it is within the proximity of the passing object. And the time here is expressed in frames. How many frames should it keep the information? So now with this selected, let's create another object. It can be a UV sphere. Let's make it smaller. And also within the same tab, let's add a dynamic paint to it. But this time change the type from canvas to brush and click add brush. Now change the paint from mesh volume to mesh volume plus pro proximity and slightly increase the distance to something like 1.5 maybe. Now one more thing, make sure that with the plane selected, when you scroll down into the output of our canvas, the paint map layer is our vertex color group that we created before. This is very important, so make sure that this group here is the group that you created by yourself. And the wet map layer, we can just click this X button and delete it completely. Now with all this set up, let's bring back our shader editor. And here, let's add a node called vertex color. And here in this node, you can see the same icon, just click on it. And here, let's choose the vertex group that we just created. Now, if we preview that, you should have something like this. The whole plane should turn blue. And that is actually good information. It just tells us how big of an area is affected by our brush. Now, this is way too big for our needs. So simply click on this object. And in the dynamic paint brush, let's turn down the distance a little bit. And as you turn it down, you can see that less and less is being affected. So let's make sure that it's about this size so that it's not too small because we will shave off those sharp edges anyway in the shader editor. So with this out of the way, let's come back to our plane. And first of all, we want this mask to correspond with the effect of the gate that we have right now. So that if we have the horizontal patterns, we want this mask to resemble this as well. So in order to do that, we will need another mix RGB node right after the vertex color. And now we can copy this noise texture that is driving the gate effect and just paste it in here. Make sure that it's connected to the same mapping node and that this value that we created is also plugged in to the second noise texture W value, which is the seed. And with this setup, we can connect this noise texture to our mix RGB and change it from mix to overlay. As you can see, there is slight pattern visible here around the mask, which is good. And we can now refine it a little bit more. But before that, let's make sure that the vertex color is connected to our mix RGB, not from color, but from alpha, because we only want black and white values because this is acting as our mask. So we don't want any color information in there. Now, after the mix RGB, let's add a color ramp again. Now we can change the interpolation from linear to cardinal, which is very similar, but gives off a little bit softer fall off and bring the black value a little bit higher, just so that we get rid of those sharp corners around the object so something like something like this even and now the similar trick that we did before with our gate let's add a math node that is set to multiply and another math node right behind it that is set to power now again the power is going to control the falloff of the mask 
and the multiply is gonna control the strength. So something not too big, maybe 1.6. And as you can see, the mask looks so much better now, but this horizontal line spatter isn't very visible and we can help that with simply bringing up the factor of the overlay node. So just bring it all the way to one and to further emphasize this effect, we can bump the roughness all the way up. And then as we add the detail, we can see those lines pop up even more. So feel free to experiment by yourself. I will keep it at something like this. And let's also bring down the multiply a bit because it seems a little bit too extreme for my liking. Okay, and this is the mask that we want to be put on top of this whole effect. So let's clean up up here a bit, it gets messy real fast. And now in order to put it on top, we'll need another math node. So let's copy the existing one, change it from power to add, and now connect this multiply here, which is our gate effect, and this power, which is the mask of the object passing through. And now this result is going straight into the mix shader factor. And now as we preview the mix shader node, you can see that it all comes together. Now we can also hit play to see that the mask here around the object and this mask on the sides work kind of together. And now we can also take this object, move it up and down. And as you see, as it gets closer to the object, it's being sort of detected. Now, if you don't like this double color thingy, then you can just get rid of this color ramp altogether. I will do that because I'm not a huge fan of this and just set one color in the emission to keep it all more coherent. So that would be it for this tutorial. I'm not gonna cover the modeling that you've seen in the intro of this video because you can use this shader however you prefer. And if you would like to add another objects and make sure that they get affected as well, then just make sure that they also have this dynamic paint brush component with them. But the easiest way to get it is simply select the object and then the object that already has this effect and then search for copy modifiers and voila, another object is being affected as well. So that would be it for this tutorial. I really can't wait to see your creative applications of this effect. And if you manage to do so, let me know. Link to my Twitter is in the description. And yeah, I hope you learned something valuable along the way. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.